Libra, it's Gregory Scott here to do your astrology for November 2015. You start the month with a grand trine in water. Okay, so the first thing you'll notice at uh, the beginning of this month, 1st of November, is that you have a much greater kind of emotional capacity than you usually do, especially when it comes around feeling your way and navigating your working life. I think you're almost going to be very psychic in terms of your work. And Halloween was a very kind of watery and intuitive time this year. And the veil has been very thin anyway. You continue that on and you apply that ability to kind of intuit, to kind of feel things in your working life. On the 2nd of November, Mercury goes into um, Scorpio in your second house. And that makes that even stronger. So you will be able to communicate and to receive communication through your feelings and you'll be able to apply that to your work. So there's going to be some sort of sixth sense around the way you navigate your career. And that's really going to help you because, you know, sometimes we look at the surface things. Like if you're, if you're planning to invest in the stock market and the advice is to, you know, invest in oranges. And everyone says that's the best thing. But it feels wrong to you. You listen to that internal guidance and you invest in limes. You may do much better. That feeling only strengthens as the first couple of days of November continue here because the thing that happens on the 3rd of November is that Neptune, the planet of water and of dreams, connects with um, your sun, which is in Scorpio in your second house at the moment. So the intuition continues around your working life. You're able to take that communication in, to process it in an emotional way and to apply it to your working life. The only thing that kind of concerns me a little bit is that you're an air sign um, as a Libra. And at this time of the month, there's really nothing going on in air. So you're going to have to change your approach a little bit. The strongest elements in your chart are earth and water. So it's like a Mercury retrograde, isn't it? When Mercury goes retrograde, you have to find alternate ways of communication. There's no air in the chart at all at the moment. So you're going to have to either use your feelings all your practical skills to make sense of your life and to navigate forward. My suggestion would be to really get in touch with your feelings, to feel your feelings, to open up your intuition and to let yourself be driven forward. When we do things differently, we can really make huge inroads because it opens up a whole new way of doing things, literally. Now, the moon starts to try Uranus on the 4th of November. And the moon is in Leo in your 11th house of hopes and dreams and friendships. And I really feel that at the moment you feel like somewhat of a star in your life. I think you feel very confident and very enthusiastic and very positive and very hopeful about what it is you're doing. And I also think that you're going to feel a sense of uh, mischief and the ability to really drive forward in your relationships and possibly even risk them. And that's not necessarily a bad thing and hear me out on that is sometimes if you're with a friend or something and you think of a like a bit of a risque joke or something that is you know you're taking a risk I could possibly offend this person but on the other side we could have a really an, an amazing laugh and we could have a wonderful Saturday afternoon or whatever it is and you tend to take risks in your friendships because you have that sense of confidence about you and I personally feel that if you do take those risks in your relationships you'll make them even better so don't shy away and don't dim your light at all this month. It's not appropriate to do so. Jupiter trines um, Pluto and it's trined that planet. The, the relationship has been there since the 8th of, Oct 8th of September, rather I should say. Um, and it will continue until the 20th of November. Jupiter is the planet of good luck and good fortune. Pluto is the planet of rebirth and transformation. You see your own family and people who are closest to you in a very forgiving, loving way at the moment. And you're very solid and very structured and very practical of what you feel towards those people, what you expect. And I think because you're so clear in your outlook about yourself, about everyone else in your life, I think people really respond to that and they meet you and they respond with sincerity and certainty and being genuine back. So what you put out, you get back and you're really rock solid in terms of your own feelings this month, Libra. And that's great because you can be somewhat, um, um, you can 
always see the other person's perspective and sometimes you can't be you're not firm enough in your own views and opinions and this month you really are two days later on the 7th of november there's a yod in your chart and a yod is also known as the finger of god and it kind of represents a real outside influence a kind of karmic influence and a kind of karmic connection here that makes a big impact again it's between your jupiter and your sun and they kind of combine via these two quincuxes um, and culminate in this Uranus, which is in your seventh house in Aries. And basically, your sense of strength, your emotional connection, will able will allow you to move forward in your relationships, possibly even make new friends to um, expand your social circle and to really drive ahead with your relationship and really take them to the next level. That can be your business relationships, it can be your friendships, it can be your personal intimate relationships, and it can be your family relationships. So everything about this month so far, the first seven days, is the self-reliance that, that you have, the self-reliance that you're enjoying, is really going to help improve your relationships in all ways. So really, it's the time to put yourself out there and to connect and to be fearless. You're going to be feeling fearless anyway, but to make use of that. So the moon goes into your first house of self on the 8th of November. Again, real feeling of peace a real sense of knowing yourself, who you are. Connect with that uh, ability to make new friends and it culminates in, in, in Pluto in your fourth house. So all of these things together on the 8th will really create a long-term relationship that will seem like family because it's so intimate and it's so personal and it's so long-term that comes into your life. So you're really creating a whole new family relationship you know I mean 10 years ago I made a very very good friend um, and then nine years later that relationship ended and um, I had to start somewhere with the relationship you know on one day we met and we connected and we had nine great years so you meet that kind of person who you have a really long-term permanent relationship with okay I know that wasn't permanent because it was nine years but long term anyway so Venus goes into Libra on the uh, 9th of November and that's really good news for you Libra because you're Libra and Venus rules your sign and it moves into your first house of self and that's where all of this security and self-love and, and stability with yourself comes from and you're perfectly in love with yourself and when you're in love with yourself not in an arrogant way I'm saying in a really positive way you know what your skills are you can see yourself for who you really are and you can do things because of that. You can't make changes when you're hating yourself and criticizing yourself. When you're there for yourself and supporting yourself, you can um, really do whatever it is you want to do. So what I'm saying to you, Libra, is this is a great time of strength, of personal kind of um, empowerment. And whatever you apply yourself to, especially from the 9th of November onwards, will be a great success for you. Venus stays in, in your first house for at least a month. So enjoy that. Neptune and um, the Moon start to trine each other on the 10th of November. Now, Neptune's in your 6th house, the Moon's in your 2nd house. And again, this heightens that ability to just sense things about your work and about money. And I think you're like a little bit of a psychic detective when it comes to finding opportunities and ways to have financial success. The 10th is amazing for that. And the 11th sees the new moon occur in Scorpio in your second house of money. Scorpio is a sign that's very controlling emotionally. <clears throat> a new moon is about how can I pour energy into a sector of my life to make it bigger? How can I have new beginnings? New beginnings in your relationships earlier in the month. Now, new relationships with money on the 11th of November. So, have a think about how you can control your financial situation, how you can increase your income, what new avenues you can look at to improve your financial situation. What can you do to make that better, to improve it? This new moon is really going to give you a sense of power and control of making things happen, whether that's your own business or whether that's uh, working in your uh, existing job as an employee and looking for other opportunities or promotion or whatever it is have a think about how you can create more money because you are in charge all of that Libra energy connected with the control of Scorpio allows you to take charge of the situation and make positive changes 
Jupiter starts to sextile your Mercury and your Sun, which are, again, in your second house. And really good luck in terms of your financial life on the 12th of November. Jupiter is the lucky planet. It's in Virgo in a sign that is very earthy and practical. So when you use your feelings to <clears throat> let you guide you in terms of what directions to take, Jupiter will give you its kind of luck, its positivity, and will really allow you to have that growth. So the 10th, 11th, and 12th of November are wonderful for you in terms of making positive changes in your finances. Mars goes into Libra on the 13th, and now that is your sign. Mars doesn't particularly like Libra. Mars rules Aries. So he is a little bit unsettled, so it might feel a little bit odd. But um, you're going to feel like a, a warrior, a soldier. You're going to be able to do what it is you want to do. And anything you apply yourself to really this month is within your grasp. You can do anything. Also, Mars and Venus, when they come together, man, woman, child. You know, it's um, the archetypal energies that create new life. So what you do this month, and I again mentioned that with the friendship earlier, is going to be long term. Okay, and you can really put some foundations in your life that will be there for a long time. And as I've said, money is particularly going to be something that you can build on. Now, on the 14th, the chart does something interesting because four of your houses just empty. Nothing's going on there. The 8th, 9th, 10th, and 11th house, 11th house have nothing going on on the 14th. So it's like tumbleweeds blowing through that area of your chart. This part of your chart is the is around noon position, so it's 10 in the morning and 2 in the afternoon, literally. And um, it means that you're really, really not focused on how you can improve yourself or how you can do more in your work or how you can achieve your dreams or how you can please other people. Well, your focus is on yourself and your own money and what you've got to say and the people who are close to you. And what you can take control of. Okay, so that's the big theme for this month. The new moon was in Scorpio, which is all about control. The full moon on the 25th is going to be in Taurus. That's all about control as well. So you're really into controlling things this month. The positive thing about that is you're so empowered with that Venus and Mars in Libra that what you do apply yourself to, you will master and you will have control over. So I really see you with a big smile on your face after November because things are really going to go your way. Jupiter um, starts to trine the Moon and Pluto on the 16th of November. Now, take some practical action with your family, work on your relationships. Um, and you can even make that better. I'm just tuning in here, just bear with me. So the thing that I'm getting is that you, if you do work at it and you take the practical action, and what can you work on with family? You can work on improving relationships. You can work at restarting relationships that have ended. You can work at making things better with kids and with parents. You can start a family business even. That's real work with, with family. If you do anything like that, you will be very successful with it, especially on the 16th of November. On the 17th, Uranus starts to oppose Venus, and Venus is there in your first house of self. Uranus kind of, it, it, it causes some friction for yourself. And remember, your Venus in Libra is very you, very much you. So the fact that Uranus comes in and causes some problems there with Aries, it's like someone else pushes against you and you might feel that people start to oppose you in some way on the 17th and you might be contradicted or you might feel like people are putting barriers in your way. So if, if you're trying to achieve things in harmony with other people, do it before the 17th because that opposition lasts until the 28th of November, so it's there for 11 days. And that's not going to serve you particularly well. The moon squares um, Saturn and the Midheaven and Mercury and the Sun on the 19th of November. And I've put in brackets here, re-evaluation. So the way you feel about money at the moment and the way you're communicating and the purpose that you've got is going to teach you something about someone who's quite close to you. And it's probably going to show you that 
they don't have the same drive or that they've got a different drive or that they're going in a different direction. So that might be the opposition that Uranus started. The, the fact that you consciously and clearly see that some people who are in your life aren't on the same page and that they want different things, that doesn't mean that they can no longer be in your life or that it's a negative thing, but it's, it's good to know when people have different wants and different needs because then you can allow for it. But if you're, you know, if you're thinking, um, I've got this friend um, and we both really want to be financially successful and we want to be really fashionable and move to Miami, okay, whatever. That might be your dream, but the other person may be thinking, I don't, I'm not interested in money, I want to improve spiritually and I want to go live in a cabin in the woods. You need to know that. Okay, and because that's a, that's going to impact your relationship in future, and you find out something like that. Mercury goes into Sagittarius on the twenty first, and your communication and your uh, way of communicating and exchanging information is going to become very very goal oriented, and you're not going to have a lot of time for frivolity. If that's a word or excessive emotions you're going to really be goal oriented and again it's now focused on what it is you can achieve in your working life and making that better for yourself so you're more comfortable so you're swapping and changing from different themes this month and now the 21st is really focused on business fine Pluto squares Venus from the 22nd of November until the 25th Pluto is in your fourth, Venus is in your first, and this square, again, draws your energy towards family, and this is very positive for you, Libra. I think the fact that you've been so um, forthright about the way you are, and that you are loving your life, and that you are in love with who you are, and you're taking ownership of your own stuff, really brings, opens up things in your family life. I mean, I'm just trying to think in terms of family life, what can open up. And again, it's relationships that have broken down, that need work, or someone who hasn't spoken to you now speaks to you again. It's something like that, or you can um, start a venture together. But sometimes things like that in family turn a corner, and I see you turning a corner. On the 23rd, the moon starts to quincux your north node in Virgo. You're going to feel the need to move forward with one of your relationships and you're going to feel like you're making the right decision. So if someone again contradicts you on this day and that Uranus raises its head, listen to yourself. You have the answer on the 23rd and it's important to go with your gut than to feel, um, than to take someone else's opinion too much because you know more about it. And that's sometimes really important advice because I don't know about you, but sometimes if I'm not sure about something, I'll ask a couple of people, and then depending on the answers I get, I'll make a decision from that. If you do that on the 23rd, it'll only confuse you. You already have the answer within. The 25th is the full moon, and that happens in your 8th house of other people, and formality, and um, hidden things in Taurus. Now, the full moon in Taurus is a blossoming, a coming to terms of practical considerations. Other people, you've been kind of tiptoeing around yourself and other people and your family relationships. I think you're going to see a positive outcome to the work you've done specifically in your family life on the 25th. Now remember I mentioned that Scorpio on the 11th in the new moon and Taurus here on the 25th in the full moon are both signs that concern themselves with control. They both like to have control. And this will control in many ways your practical tangible relationships and it will alter the way your day-to-day -day life looks because this person is going to be more of a fixture in your life the north node and jupiter they start to really come together now in your 12th house they're seven degrees apart and they and um, square they square the moon And um, your moon is in Gemini, right on top of the noon position of your chart, which means that at this time, you're going to feel like all the information you're getting, you understand very well. 
Again, you have that certainty of, I am making the right decisions. I can understand anything that comes my way. And I really think you can on the 27th. Again, you do, I mean, this is weird advice, but you do have all the answers this month, Libra. And no one has all the answers all the time, but sometimes you can get pretty close and you're a bit of a know-it-all because you pretty much know most of it in November, especially around the 27th. So please, please, please rely on your own guidance, rely on your own answers, rely on your own insights. They're going to be the best for you this month. Uranus starts to oppose Mars and it does that on the 28th and it will continue to oppose the planet until the 20th of December. So pretty much a whole month. And Mars here is in your first, giving you that energy and that strength. And Uranus is just chipping away you on the other side of the chart, irritating you. And it's I think now some arguments could start. If people start to kind of contradict you or something, um, I think you could blow up a little bit. And they'll blow up back. So I think it's important to, to manage your life in such a way that the people who are your biggest detractors don't have such great access to you and what you're doing and to really safeguard your own kind of inner circle and to fill that with people who are supportive and not detractors. You know, you don't want to be surrounded by yes men, but you also don't want to be surrounded by constant no men all the time either. So it's important to take the pressure off yourself by having good people around you at the end of November. On the 30th, the moon starts to trine your sun and your Saturn, which are in your third house. And this is a good ending to the month because you'll come back to that feeling of, I'm the star in my life. You know, I'm really doing very well here, that sense of real self-love, real contentment with the self, and that will manifest itself in real solidity in the way you communicate, especially around the end of the month. It's a good time to set new goals. The, the, uh, the new moon was as well, but that was more oriented towards controlling your finances and to look at making more money or how you can make money. This is about the future and how can you, where do you see your path going? And how can you shine in your own life? And how can you communicate that? You know, how can you not put your light under a bushel and um, let it shine and really walk with your head up high and walk down the street and confidently into your successful, wonderful future? So that's November for you, Libra. I hope you found that useful. If you'd like a private reading with me, please visit the website. It's gregoryscott.com. Uh, click on the readings tab and you'll see the types of readings that I offer, astrology, tarot and numerology. If you'd like any of those readings, then just select them on the website. Please remember to subscribe to the channel and you can also find me on Facebook, Twitter and Instagram. The username is Gregory Scott 444 Have a wonderful November and I will speak to you next month.